What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is tackle three difficult types of problems that if you wanna get an A on your test or quiz, then you absolutely are gonna to wanna to make sure you know how to do when solving a systems of equations algebraically. Now, mainly that's gonna focus on elimination or substitution, but I only like to use substitution when I have a variable isolated by itself. Obviously, you can use substitution or elimination for any system, but I think more often than not on the more difficult problems that elimination is going to be your method of choice. Rather than spending the time isolating a variable to be able to plug it in to the other equation. So let's go and take a look at these three examples to make sure that if you have a test or a quiz coming up, that you are ready to get that A. So in this first example is a classic problem that always seems to show up. You have every variable that has a coefficient, and unfortunately, there's not a single scalar that I can multiply one equation by the other to get what the other value of a coefficient is. And what I mean by that is, again, remember when we're using elimination, we want the coefficient of our variables to be exactly the same. Well, there's no number I can multiply by three to get to two, right? Or at least a integer. And there's no integer I can multiply by two to give me three. And the same thing works for a five and negative three. So unfortunately, what we're going to need to do is multiply it by scalar by both equations. And this is not ideal because it takes a little bit more work. But our main idea that we need to make sure we know about this is understanding the least common multiple of our coefficients. Basically, I want to know what is the smallest number that either two and three evenly divide into or five and three. Now, again, you can pick either or. And some students are like, well, how do you know which one? And again, the easy answer, it doesn't matter. Like you could simply just pick one and then roll with it. However, if you are looking for a little bit of advice, what I always like to do is is try to find the smallest least common multiple between my two values. Now, since there's no multiple that takes me from one coefficient to the other, I can find the least common multiple by simply multiplying my coefficients. So in this case, the least common multiple of two and three is gonna be six. The least common multiple of five and three, don't worry about the negative, is going to be a 15. So therefore, two and three have a smaller least common multiple. Therefore, that is the variable that I'm gonna focus on eliminating first. So again, what I need to do is I need to get both of these coefficients to be six because that is the least common multiple. So how do you do that? Well, again, you do that by using a scalar. So to get three to be a six, I need to multiply by two. So I'm going to go ahead and use my parentheses here. To get a two to be a six, I'm going to multiply by three. If you've been following my instructions on any previous videos, you know I do not like subtracting two equations. I always like to add two equations. So therefore, I do not want my coefficients to be a six x and a six x. I want one of them to be negative. Therefore, I can add them and eliminate my variable. Now again, which one you choose to be negative, it does not really matter. And I don't think there is a strategy that's going to make it easier for one or the other. So therefore, I can get one coefficient to be the opposite sign. So now I need to multiply these. And again, I use parentheses here very strategically to make sure I remember I multiply everything by these scalars. So this kind of looks a little messy. Let's go ahead and distribute my two scalars of a two and a negative three to the whole equation to produce those equivalent equations and rewrite my new system. Okay, now you guys can see I have exactly what I want, right? I have coefficients for the x's that are exactly the same. One's positive, one negative. Now I can simply just go ahead and add them up. And again, I can add them up because you can see they are vertically aligned. So let's just go ahead and add these two equations vertically. So six x plus a negative six x is just gonna be a zero x, which is a zero. 10 y plus nine y is going to be a 19y and then a 10 plus a negative 48 is going to equal a negative 38. So now I can just go ahead and solve for y by dividing a 19 on both sides and y equals a negative two. Now again, remember we need to solve for x. Don't forget about solving for x. And so what we need to do then is just plug it back into one of the equations. I'm not seeing one of these equations is going to be a little bit easier than the other. So I'm just going to pick the top equation. Okay. And again, sometimes if you do have a variable that doesn't have a coefficient, I would use that equation. But in this example, I'm not seeing anything that is strategically better than the other. So let's just pick the top equation. And again, just to reiterate, I replaced the, my y in the top equation with a negative two, because again, I know that value. I can now just go ahead and simplify this equation to a two-step equation. So three X minus 10 is going to equal a five. And therefore I can go ahead and solve. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the solution that is going to satisfy this system of equation is going to be when x equals five and y equals negative two. All right. Now in this next example, you might look at this and say, nope, not going to be doing this one. And I can probably agree with you. Fractions are not a lot of people's friends, but again, we're not trying to be friends with fractions. We want to get that A. So we need to be able to understand how can we approach when we have a problem with fractions, regardless of how many times your teacher has or has not covered fractions in their instruction. So what do we want to do here? Do we want to do elimination with fractions? And my easy answer is no, I do not want to do elimination with fractions. I want to get rid of the fractions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal our understanding with using multipliers as well as the least common multiple. Because remember, whenever I multiply something by a whole equation, I produce an equivalent equation, which does not change the solutions to that equation. So what that means is I can multiply these two equations on the top and the bottom by a given number that can eliminate the fractions. Now, what is it going to be that number that's going to eliminate the fractions? Well, it's going to be a number that my denominator 
denominators, my two and my three, or my three and my four, evenly divide into. That number is what we call the least common multiple or least common denominator in this scenario. So again, what we're looking for is what is the smallest number two and three evenly divide into? Well, guys, that was in the last example. That was a six. So let's go and multiply this top equation by a six. Again, I'm not trying to get the same coefficients right now. I'm just trying to get rid of the fractions, right? I can easily kind of diagnose what's going on here when I'm not dealing with fractions. Right now, I just want to eliminate the fractions. In the second example, in the bottom equation, I have a four and a three. Again, there's no easy number to multiply between these two. So therefore, I can just multiply them to get a 12. And again, that is going to be my least common denominator here. So I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by a 12. And again, you got to make sure you multiply everything times here. And again, sometimes when multiplying by fractions, it gets a little confusing for students. Just remember like six times two, you can always rewrite a six as over one and then multiply straight across, right? So therefore they give you a six over two, which is going to equal a three. So therefore I'm just going to kind of use an arrow here to rewrite my new equations to the right hand side. This is going to be a three and an X. Now, when I multiply a six times a two thirds, that's going to be a little bit different, I think for some students. But again, you can still kind of use the same process. You can either multiply straight across, or you could say, well, three divides into six at two times. Two times two is going to equal a four. So therefore, that's going to be a positive four y. And then make sure you multiply the six times one, which is going to equal a six. Now, again, in this case, now we're going to do the 12. So 12 times a three fourths. And again, you could do this two different ways. You can multiply across like 12 times three is going to be a 36. And then divide that by four times one or four, which is going to be a nine x. So that's going to be a nine x. And then and then we can also do over here. So I could do 12 times a one third. I'm not going to worry about the negative. I'm just going to insert this, whatever my value is, I know is going to be negative. And in this case, again, I can just say, well, three divides in 12 four times. So that's going to be minus a four Y. And then 12 times two is going to equal a 24. Now here's something really cool, guys. Notice now on my two equations, one is positive with a four Y and one is a negative four Y. So that means I can simply just add my two equations up together. So it didn't really work out here doing it to the right. Let's go ahead and center this. Okay, by now writing it over here, I can go ahead and I have room to go ahead and put a plus sign. And now I'm just going to add them vertically because again, my X's and y, my Y's are aligned vertically. So three X plus nine X is going to be a 12 X. This is gonna eliminate my Y variable. Awesome. And then six plus 24 is going to equal a 30. Now I can go ahead and divide by 12 on both sides and X is gonna equal a 30 over 12. Now again, we wanna be able to reduce our answer, right? I think most teachers are gonna always ask for a reduced solution. So what I wanna know is what is the same number I can evenly divide into the 30 as well as into the 12? And hopefully we can see here, I can divide that 30, I can divide a six right in the top and bottom, that's going to be a five halves. The other reason why simplifying this is gonna be so important is because remember, I have to pull like the X into one of these equations, right? Now I technically have four different equations I can choose from, right? I have the original one with fractions in the top, I have the original bottom one with fractions and I have the top without fractions and the bottom without fractions. So which one do you pick? And again, guys, it does not really matter which one you want to pick. I think a lot of students struggle with fractions, but I also think you dealing with smaller numbers is going to be the easier approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the original equation because I see that one and these fractions and it seems like pretty straightforward to me. So I'm going to replace my X in this original equation with a five halves. Okay. Now we want to make our teacher happy by showing them that we can solve an equation with fractions. And again, we could actually do the exact same thing that we did before, we could get rid of our fractions if we wanted to by producing an equivalent equation. Let's go ahead and multiply this over. So I get a five fourths plus a two thirds Y is equal to a one. Now, again, you could use fraction operations if you really wanted to, or you could say, Hey, why don't we multiply everything by the LCD again, just to kind of get rid of my fraction, right? If I multiply everything by 12, right? So that's going to be 12, um, four divides in 12, three times, three times five is going to be a 15, three divides into 12, four times, four times two is going to be an eight Y is equal to a 12 times one, which is going to be a 12. Now let's just go ahead and solve my equation without the fractions. So you kind of see what I'm doing. Like you could definitely do fraction operations, but if you struggle with fractions or if a problem like this gives you like the heebie jeebies, then eliminate the fraction by using that least common multiple. So therefore I will subtract a 15 and I get a eight Y equals a negative three divided by eight Y is equal to a negative three eighths. So thankfully we did not have to solve this equation by graphing because I think you would agree if we had a point that was at five halves and negative three eighths, that would be pretty difficult to be able to find using the graphing approach. But thankfully using our elimination method algebraically, we could be able to find the two values that satisfy these two equations. Now this last example might look pretty straightforward, just might look like we kind of have some bigger numbers. But if actually, if you kind of zero in a little bit, you recognize that everything is all over the place, right? I don't have 
any of my equations aligned. And that's actually really, really important because everything that I've talked about, you know, solving using the substitution method has all been based on that my variables are vertically aligned. And if that is not the case, that is absolutely the first thing that you need to make sure that you do. So let's go ahead and actually do that for both of these equations. And to do that, I'm going to just write out my equations separately, and then I'm going to put them in the form of AX plus BY is equal to C, which we call our standard form. Okay, now you could definitely probably do that in your head. You didn't need to show your work. I just wanted to kind of do it step by step. So therefore you could make sure you follow. The one big kind of caveat sometimes students will make is just make sure again, you have X and Y, right? Make sure that those are following. Because when I add this nine X to the same side, sometimes people want to put the number that we add to the number that was already there. We want to make sure we have the X in front of the Y in both these equations. Okay, so now I have my two equations, right? In my standard form, I'm now going to vertically align them to go and see what is the best way to go ahead and solve. Okay, so now you can see that again, all of my variables are have coefficients. So I'm definitely going to want to use my elimination method. And to determine which variable I want to eliminate, I want to be able to find which coefficients are going to have the smallest common multiple. And nine and five have a common multiple of 45 and three and four have a common multiple of 12, right? And again, I quickly just did that by multiplying my two coefficients to find a common multiple since there is no direct number I can multiply from one to the other. So I'm definitely going to focus on obtaining the same common coefficient for my y variable. So again, that number is going to be 12 that I'm going to want to obtain. So to be able to do that though, I need to use my scalar. So again, if I want to get three to be 12, I need to multiply that by four. And again, I'm going to use my distributive property, right? Because you got to make sure you multiply that four times everything. Now, the nice thing here is again, we have a coefficient that one's positive, one's negative. So therefore both of my scalars can be positive because I'm already going to have a positive and a negative for a coefficient, which I could then just add my two equations. Now to get a four to be a 12, I'm going to be multiplying by three. Again, I'm not really worrying about the negative in this case. I just want the value of those coefficients to both be 12 and ideally one positive, one negative. So now let's go ahead and multiply here by a three to let's see what we're going to obtain. Okay, so now you can see that um, by multiplying my four times everything, I got a 20X plus 12Y equals 208. And by multiplying a three times everything, I got a 27X minus 12Y equals a 168. Now again, notice now my coefficients for Y is one positive 12, one negative 12, that's awesome. So now I can just add my two equations. And again, I also have my variables vertically aligned. So I can now just add these equations vertically, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So therefore that's gonna be a 47X, 12Y minus negative 12Y is obviously gonna eliminate that Y. So that's gonna go to zero. And that's gonna equal a 300 and let's see a 76. Now I can just divide by 47 on both sides and I get X is equal to an eight. Now, again, remember I need to go ahead and solve for Y. So therefore I'm going to plug it into an equation. And again, I have multiple equations I could plug into. I could plug into my original equations. I could even plug into my original, original equations if I really wanted to, which is not that bad over here. Cause I'll just divide by negative nine, but I don't know, really doesn't matter at this point, guys. I think just kind of like picking an equation that you can plug X into therefore that you can solve for Y. So I'm just going to pick this top equation. It seems pretty straightforward. There's no negatives. I kind of like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace an X in this equation with an eight. And again, I'm just going to use the original equation, not one multiplied by four. Okay. So now I can just go ahead and simplify this five times eight. That's going to be a 40 plus a three Y equals a 52. And then you can just go ahead and subtract a 40 on both sides. And you get a three Y is equal to a positive 12 divided by three. And now you can see Y is equal to four. Therefore, when X equals eight and Y equals four, your simultaneous equations are satisfied. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you are ready to get that a, but if you need a couple more examples, then please feel free to check out the multiple examples I have for you down below. Or if you're looking for more notes, or resources that I provide to students in my courses, then go and check out the information I have for you down below or my next video I have for you here. Cheers.